Mom. Thanks so much for all you've done this way. Thanks for doing this. Grandy, thanks, man. Thank you. All right. Thank Today on a Dr. Phil exclusive. Police in Phoenix hunt for a freeway shooter. They said your gun was mashed to the bullets found in those cars. There's no way that's possible. Ten cops jump on you, take automatic rifles and point them at you and your five-month-old daughter. Your 9mm high point, it was the weapon that was used in these shootings. It has been scientifically analyzed. My gun is in my possession. Nobody touches it. So if that gun shot a bullet, it was your finger on the trigger. It's supposed to be a five-minute trip that ended up being seven months in jail. For 222 days, you were in solitary confinement? Totally isolated. I'm the wrong guy. I tried telling the detectives that. I still worry because if they've manufactured evidence once to arrest me, why would they not try and do this again? They're saying we still believe he's the freeway shooter. It was a string of crimes that had many in the state of Arizona fearing for their lives every time they got in their cars. A sniper shooting at vehicles traveling on the city's I-10 freeway caused a wave of panic across the city. I really haven't gotten on any interstates, and I'm not planning on it. I don't want to get shot at. Bullets piercing car doors, smashing through windshields, popping tires, and even injuring a teenage girl. After weeks of searching for the shooter, police finally connected a high point 9mm handgun to 21-year-old Leslie Merritt Jr. With Merritt in custody, the shootings seemed to cease. The police assured the community it was safe to be back on the roads. The sniper who had been terrorizing the streets of Arizona was behind bars. There was just one problem. Leslie Merritt Jr. insisted he was innocent. He said his gun was at the pawn shop when at least one of the shootings occurred, and he wasn't the shooter. He pleaded not guilty and even told the judge, quote, you've got the wrong guy. Take a look. Police in Phoenix this morning are looking at thousands of tips in their hunt for a freeway shooter. Weeks of terror in the Phoenix area. I think my window just got shot. Police say 11 vehicles were hit by bullets on the highways between August 29th and September 10th. Uh, now, boom, exploded. I had glass flying through the truck and all over me. The search for the I-10 shooter continues. This map shows all of those locations state troopers have confirmed actual shootings. With each passing day, tensions are mounting knowing the shooter is still out there. We got him. That tweet from Arizona Governor Doug Ducey hopefully is calming the fears of nearly four and a half million people. Arizona officials said they arrested 21-year-old Leslie Allen Merritt Jr. last night. Authorities believe he is responsible for at least the first four of 11 shootings. I'm the wrong guy. I tried telling the detectives that. My gun has been in the pawn shop. DPS just released hundreds of pages of documents this afternoon showing us how they pinned the crime on Leslie Merritt Jr. Based on receipts and surveillance video, DPS detectives say Leslie Merritt Jr. pawned a high point 9 millimeter the day after the shooting started. DPS test fired that gun and the results connected it to those shootings. All indications are this case is still moving forward, but with a lot more questions. Leslie Merritt Jr. is still the prime suspect, but the case against him appears to have taken a hit. Earlier this week, a judge had Merritt released from jail after a ballistics report showed the gun he was accused of using didn't match the bullet fragments found at four of the 11 freeway shooting scenes. Sometime next week, a judge is expected to sign off on this motion and formally dismiss the charges. Leslie Merritt Jr. is 100% innocent, and he has been from day one. The director of the Department of Public Safety says law enforcement still believes Leslie is the Arizona sniper, and they reserve the right to refile charges against him at any time. 
Leslie Merritt Jr. is here today speaking out for the first time in an exclusive interview. For people that don't know, on September 18th of last year, you were arrested, correct? Yes, sir. Tell me why. Uh, there was a string of freeway shootings out in Arizona, and they believe I was their main suspect. They believe you're the shooter, right? Yeah. They think you're the one that pulled the trigger on these things and and did the shooting. At, at the time you were arrested, you were in a parking lot, right, coming out of a store? Yes, uh, I went to Walmart because I just got paid. So I went to go buy some diapers and wipes for my daughter. Which is how old at the time? Uh, five and a half months. You're there with your fiance. Yes, sir. And did you have your other child with you? No, we, uh, we dropped him off at my ex-fiance's mother's house so she could babysit him. OK, so you come out and you get how far out the door? 10, 15 feet. OK, and did they come up on foot or in cars? Uh, four SUVs, they pulled up. All the full military gear, they jumped down, got their uh, ARs, you know, get on the ground, don't move. And I'm like, you know, why? what did I do? OK, ARs, about automatic right, rifles? Yes. My ex-fiance, she didn't even realize it was happening. She kept walking. I looked over, they had their weapons pointed at my five-month-old daughter and her, too. She turned around, you know, what's going on? I said, I don't know. I was a little upset to have a rifle pointed at my five-month-old daughter, though. OK, so did they take you down? Yeah, they told me, to you know, get on the ground, don't move. I got on the ground, <laughs> didn't want to. So how many officers were there? I want to say easily 10 to 12. So they have you on the ground. They're pointing these automatic rifles at you. They're pointing them also at your then fiance mm -hmm. and your five-month-old daughter. What did they do with you once you were on the ground? I laid down. Uh, one of the officers you know, kind of hopped over me, searched me. You know, you have any weapons? Said, no, I don't have no weapons. At that time, you know, why am I being arrested? Oh, don't worry. We'll get to that in a little bit. So they cuff you? Uh, yeah, yeah. They, okay. they searched me on the floor, then they put me against the cop car. They searched me there again. And they didn't, did they put you in the car, or they yeah, leave you stand there? We stayed parked in Walmart for, I want to say, easily 30 minutes to an hour while they figured out whatever they had to figure out. At this point, have they yet told you why you're being arrested? Not a word. Every time I ask, we can't talk to you. We'll talk to you when we get where we're going. Did you have any sense why you were arrested? I had no idea. All I know is I walked out of the store, and here comes the SWAT team. Do you have a criminal background? I have no criminal history. You have no background of breaking, entering, assault, drugs, anything at all? No, I've never been in So we pull trouble. your criminal history, it's going to be clear? Yeah. Traffic tickets? I have one, yeah. Speeding ticket or something? Yeah. So when is the first time they tell you you're being arrested for suspicion of being the I-10 freeway shooter? They didn't tell me until, I want to say, almost six hours later when my interrogation happened. We actually have a clip of that exchange. OK, Leslie, why do you think you're here? Dude, I got no clue, man. Not at all. Got off work, went to go cash my check, and I knew it. Old damn world in my face with guns. Why do you think you would be here? I have an idea, man. Traffic ticket or something? I don't know. I, I don't. Okay. Anything that you can think of that you might have done or something that would nah, get man, you here? I've been staying out of trouble. Do you want a? Uh, Nine millimeter high point, yeah. some automatic handgun. Tell me about that. How did you come in possession of that handgun? I bought it from Cabela's, brand yeah. new in the box. Okay. Uh, are you familiar with all these shootings that have been occurring on I-10? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, tell me what you know about these shootings that have been occurring on I-10. I know they've happened from like 83rd to 16th Street, mm -hmm. something like that. What else do you know about? They got a couple guys already that are, what do they call them? Suspects and being questioned. Mm -hmm. OK, well, that's what we're here to talk about, mm -hmm. OK? Um, I won't beat around the bush anymore. Let's, let's I'm a suspect get, in that, yeah. you, You're beyond a suspect in this, OK? How am I beyond and, a suspect? Well, I'm going to tell you right now that the, your 9 millimeter high point, we have it. Mm -hmm. It's been removed out of pawn. And it was the weapon that was used in these shootings. It has been, How could that it has be been scientifically analyzed by our crime lab. OK. And it has been shown that bullets that were recovered from our crime scenes came from that gun. So what's in your head at that point? I, I just, I couldn't understand because I know that I was not the person to do this, you know. I like being outside, I love nature, you know. I'm not a guy that's gonna go harm other people. I don't understand why they're saying I did this. But they just told you that they had scientific evidence that 
your gun was matched to the bullets that were found in those cars, and your response was okay. I didn't understand what was going on, because in my head, I'm like, how can this be? Because I know I didn't do this. There's no way it could match. But I already knew there's no point in arguing with them. They had their mind made up. Did you think about telling them that's not possible? You knew you had the gun during that time, yes. so you knew that it couldn't be your gun. Yeah. You didn't tell them that. I was just totally shocked and un I confused. I didn't understand, you know, because I know I didn't do it. Right. As a matter of fact, I think several times in the interview, I told them, you know, I'm innocent, you have the wrong guy. I even asked for a polygraph and they refused to give me one. Right. So they continue to talk to you. They tell you they know you're the guy because they know the, that this is the gun that did this. So you go before the judge and they set your bail at how much? It was really one million cash only. You couldn't set a bond, you had to be cash, which means you ain't getting out. I told him, how do you ever expect me to pay this? I could never afford that bond though. Right. And I got two kids, you know? You like guns? I'm fond of them. You own guns? Not You've right now, guns? no. I've had well, I mean, you, you, you like guns, you've yes. owned guns yes, before. You bought this gun, when did you buy it? July 3rd, 2015. You bought it before these shootings occurred? Yeah. See, uh, I live in a pretty rough area of town. Uh -huh. I've had break-ins before. I wanted to make sure my family and my children were protected, so I bought it totally for self-defense. You bought it thinking the day might come where you might have to shoot somebody. Have you ever had to shoot at somebody? No. Have you ever had to take the gun out in anticipation of protecting your family? No, never. Did you carry the gun with you sometimes? Everywhere I went, it was with me. Okay, did you have a permit to carry it? In Arizona, you don't have to have a concealed weapons permit, so. So you can just carry a yeah. gun. You carried this gun with you all the time, but you didn't have it with you when you came out of the Walmart. No, it was already uh, in the pawn shop. Right. As a matter of fact, the day that I cashed my check and I was arrested, I was gonna leave Walmart and go pick my gun up from the pawn shop. Okay, why did you pawn it? I pawned it three different times. Right. The first time I pawned it is because my car broke down and I needed a part. The second time is my ex fiance wanted to go on a movie date. I didn't have money, so I pawned it. And the final time was my daughter needed formula. How much did you pay for the gun when you bought it? Uh, $165. When you would pawn it, how much money would they give you for it? I think the first time they gave me 60 and then the second and third time it was $70. So you would go back and get it for how much? It'd be a percentage of, I want to say 90. It'd be $90 to get it back out. Okay. And you would leave it in there how long? If you look at the way I pawned it, it's in between my payday. So I'd pawn it, get paid, and get it right back out. So these shootings took place August 29th, August 30th, August 31st, and you, you pawned the gun on August 30th. So you didn't have it very long before you pawned it. No. You bought this gun July 3rd. Yes. And it was never out of your possession. Not one time. You didn't loan this to anybody. Never. My gun is in my possession. Nobody touches it. My ex-fiance wouldn't even touch it, I wouldn't let her. So if that gun... Just to bring it to a licensed dealer and pawn it, it's gonna be reported and that's, that's how he got caught. So if that gun shot a bullet, it was your finger on the trigger. If that gun shot a vehicle or a person? If it, it shot anywhere, the yeah, only, it only been me. finger that's ever pulled that trigger is yours. Yes, sir. What's your understanding about how they found you? For me, basically, they looked up a list of guns that had recently been pawned, and I think mine fit the theory of what they were trying to do the most, and that's why they arrested me. All right, well, let's listen to what they had to say about the ballistics during the interrogation, and then I'll get you to comment on that. So explain to me how your weapon that has been scientifically I don't tested. Know. I can't tell you how, I don't know. Well, here, you have a weapon that you purchased. Yes. Okay, you're the only person that has owned that weapon. Yep. Um, you just told me and I just got that information from everybody else that I spoke to, that you've never lent that gun out to anybody. No, Nobody else borrows it. it. You have it with you at all times. Yep. So it's never been out of your possession. No. It comes back ballistically. That's OK. Tested and it comes one, back sir. to those bullets. You check every camera on the I-10 the last well, one. Trust, me, been, trust well, me. I have not been on the here's, I-10. Here's, here's the thing that's <laughs> funny that you said that. Funny thing that you said that. Those cameras have been up, and those cameras cover every mile on the interstate. And guess who we saw on that video? It's been recorded. Yeah, but guess you know that is what you can show me? I got video in there. I got video in there. So if you need to see that video to sit there and prove the point, rather than being, a man, rather than the being a man and just admit. I'll tell you where I've been. I went to 44th Street and Chandler Boulevard because I have a job there. 
Okay, so you said, I know there are cameras on the freeway. Mm -hmm. So you wanted them to show you... What they were saying. So they could prove you were there at the time. Yes. And did they show them to you? They told me, oh, we'll get to that, we'll let you see them, but they never produced it. Not during that interrogation, not during the 222 days that you sat in jail. Never one time have I seen it. The ballistics that said this matched your gun, did they produce the ballistics reports? Um, I'm not too sure. I haven't actually seen a ballistics report, but they say it exists. There's, there's something there because they got me indicted, so there has to be something there, but I know that it doesn't match my weapon. Your ex fiance they took her to the station as well. Yes. When you got to the police station, they kept you separate. Yes. And where was the baby? She was in her mom's arms the whole time. And did they question her? Yeah, I was actually uh, where they had me. I could hear her crying and screaming. And for me, it was like a psychological game. They were trying to upset me, so when they interrogated me. Okay, so you could hear them interrogating her. I couldn't hear their questions, but I could hear her, you know, oh, I don't know, I, he wouldn't do this, that kind of stuff. I could hear her screaming that at them because she was, I mean, you could hear her crying. She was upset. I don't have anything to you tell. You know nothing. I know nothing. Find that hard to believe. I know nothing at all. I don't know anything. I don't. Could you hear the baby? Yeah, I could hear my daughter crying. She was crying too. Because when I got arrested, we, did, we went, we, we literally went to cash my check and pick up diapers, so we didn't have a bottle or no one with us, and she was hungry. It was supposed to be a five-minute trip that ended up being seven months in jail. And how long were your ex-fiance and your daughter in that room that you could hear? I want to say at least an hour. And let's listen to what they said to you about her while they were interrogating you. Okay. I'm telling you, I did not do this, man. I'm, I have no reason to lie, man. I don't want to go to jail. I got a family to take care of, man. And, and that's 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 a, that's another that's interesting you bring that up because that's going to be my next point. If you're saying that you weren't doing the shootings, yes, sir. I spoke with your wife earlier, mm -hmm. and she said that she was with you on the 29th mm -hmm. all day. Mm -hmm. She said she was with you all day the 30th. Mm -hmm. Is that correct? It's a weekend, man. We're together all weekend. Well, I'm just asking you. Not, not. Yeah, I think, happens. I believe, yes, sir. Is, that the, is that the case? I'm with my wife every weekend. Okay. Any day I'm not at work, I'm with so, my wife and kids. So if that's the case, and these are dates that these shootings occurred, and you're telling me that you didn't do the shooting, so no. are you? So are you? No, no, so all right, then, well, then look at where I'm coming with this. So no. somebody had to do it. It wasn't my wife. It wasn't me, man. I'm talking your wife. I'm talking people that are close yeah, to you. Wife wouldn't say that. Well, I'm, I'm telling you, I spoke to her earlier, and you know she was here earlier, and you know that I spoke with her. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you, I spoke to people that are close to you, and they've all told me the same story. And the same story is that when Leslie does something wrong, Leslie won't own up to it. What he does is he blames everybody else. There's always another reason, there's another person, this and that. Okay, what were they trying to get you to say here? Either I was responsible or that maybe she had done it. So they were trying to get you to roll over on her? Yes. Were they trying to imply that she had said something negative about you? Somewhere in the interview, they said, well, you're capable of doing this. And I told him, no. Like, right there, I told him, no, there's no way. I, I think he did it. Why would she I even tell us that? No, I'm telling you, she said that. I'm just telling you. He's telling you. He's being honest with you. I'm being honest with you, man. Said that you At the end of the conversation, of this. she said, you are capable of going and doing something like this. She did Yeah. No. Did you believe that she said that? No, I know she wouldn't say that. You've talked to her since. Did she say that? Only after they threatened to put her, to remove her from my children, put her in prison as a domestic terrorist. And then she goes, well, I don't know. I wasn't with them. Maybe he could have done it. But for the whole interview, she was maintaining the same thing. You know, we're together. We're always together. He didn't do this. So you think they coerced her into saying it's possible? She never said you did. She said, well, maybe it's possible. They're down right there and they take my kids away and put her in prison. I mean, they said, if you don't tell us what we want, you're going to jail. She told you that? More or less, yeah. They interrogated you for how long? I think like an hour and eight minutes. And then did what? Took me to jail. Because at the very end, I asked them, am I going home or am I going to jail? They said, you're going to jail. You watch television, right? Yes. You watch Law and Order and yes. all these TV shows and stuff. Did it ever occur to you to ask for a lawyer? You know, I didn't think I needed one because once again, I'm innocent. I didn't do this. So I figured, you know, I answered their questions. I'm going home. But if somebody's there saying, we have video of you on I-10 shooting at cars. We've ballistic tested your gun. 
10 cops jump on you coming out of Walmart and take automatic rifles and point them at you, your fiance, and your five-month-old daughter in a shopping cart and drag your ass to jail and say they know you did this, it never occurs to you, you know what, I might need reinforcements down here. I was like, you know, I got this, I know I didn't do it, I know there's no way it matches, I know they're wrong, there's no way to have a video of me because I didn't do this. Right. At what point did you decide that, I don't know, maybe I need a lawyer? When I was sitting in jail. Actually, what, what happened was a, a public defender came and uh, my dad actually had reached out to Jason Lamb and him and Ulysses Fair got they partnered up to, because this is such a big case, it take more than one lawyer. You're in there being interrogated. They're telling you they've got video of you, which you've never seen. They're telling you that they know you did this. You're saying you, you know you didn't. Now, on August 29th, there's a shooting at 11.03, 11.05 in the morning. 11.03 and 11.05, you say you're in Glendale on the phone calling your grandfather yes, sir. in Florida. Now, there's another shooting at 10.15 p.m. that night. And at 10.15 that night, you say you're in bed. I'm laying in bed, putting my daughter to sleep, about to go to sleep myself. And this is witnessed by who? My ex fiance sister and my ex fiance She saw you there yep. at 10.15. Yes. So you couldn't have been There's over no on way the freeway. Possible. How can I be Because that's like 12 miles? About 12, yeah. OK, the next day at 5.30, it's, it's August 30th, at 5.30, you pawned the gun. Yes, I did. Okay. At 9.30, there's another shooting. That they say that round matches my gun. Well, how is that possible if my gun's already in the pawn shop? And that person takes their car to the BMW dealership at, on the next day and says, you got a problem with his tire. Yes. They work on the tire and they find a bullet inside the tire. Yeah. And they get that bullet out and they match that bullet to your gun. That's what caused a big controversy because how is that possible? if my gun was already in the pawn shop during the time that his vehicle was shot. Okay. Now, you're saying that he says that his tire problem occurred at 930. Yes. And you say they're now trying to convince him that his tire problem happened earlier. He just didn't notice it till 930. Actually, I believe in, in his uh, interview, he told him, because they tried to say, well, maybe it wedged in. He goes, no, you're wrong. It would have fell out, not into the tire. Right. So even he knew something was up. If all four shootings came from the same gun. It can't be my gun because my gun was only available for the first three. It was not available for the fourth. But like I said, it may have been available, but I was nowhere near any of the scenes. You're saying it was in your possession for the first three, but it wasn't even in your possession for the fourth one. That's right. On August 31st, there was a truck shot at 4.30 in the morning. Yes. On the 8th of September, there was a police car shot, a sergeant was shot at. Then there was a pickup truck shot at 5.35 a.m. The next day, there's another pickup truck shot at 5.37 a.m. On the 10th, there was a semi-trailer truck shot. On the 11th, they arrest somebody. Now, on the 18th, they release that person and then they arrest you. Yeah. Okay, so these things all happen before you're arrested, but after you've pawned your gun. Yes. So how could I be still shooting that car? How could I be responsible for any of them? These things keep going on when you don't have your gun, is my point. Yes, but I'm still classified as he did it. For me, it was hard to understand. If there's 11 shootings, how are they only going to give me four if they're saying that my gun matches these? Did you have your gun on September the 8th? No, it was in the pawn shop. Did you have your gun on September 10th? In the pawn shop. My, my thing is, I think the only reason they charged me with those four is because they knew they couldn't match it to the rest of the theory because it was in the pawn shop. So they didn't charge you with these others. They just charged you with those four. Yes. yes. Would it surprise you if we had found someone that told us that they had seen you on the freeway during the shooting? Coming up. For me, jail was kind of like a, a mental torture. For some. Would it surprise you if we had found someone that told us that they had seen you on the freeway during the shootings? It would surprise me, but I wouldn't doubt it because there's a lot of people trying to get 15 minutes of fame out of this whole case. So I wouldn't doubt someone would fabricate a story just to be. Would, would, would there be any reason that somebody did see you there during that time? Not a one. I'm absolutely 100%. I did not do this. The FBI did a cell site, which is they follow your GPS. 
and there's not one hit on the entire I-10 of me being there. Well, that tells them your phone wasn't there. It doesn't tell them you weren't there. They're basing their case off of where I was, which is where my cell phone was. And actually, there's another one where uh, two shootings were 11.03 and 11.05. I was on the phone at 11.04 with my grandfather at my apartment. You're saying that your phone didn't ping near the freeway. My phone's with me at all times. But your phone could have been left somewhere else, and you could have been by the freeway, but you're saying, no, 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 I was on my phone. Yes. And we know that you were on your phone how? It was actually my grandfather's house phone. He didn't answer. I left a voicemail. Did they save that voicemail? Uh, he actually deleted it. But the call record, we have the call records that prove that's what I did. And you, you have the call records showing that that call originated yes. in Glendale at 11.03. Yes. And uh, Mac's fiance, she was there. She'll testify to you that I was on the phone. My aunt, who was in Florida, which is where I called, she was at my grandfather's house. She heard the voicemail. She just didn't think nothing of it. What do you think about somebody that would take a gun and shoot at innocent people in cars? I mean, you're like the scum of the earth to me. That, that's not right to try and harm innocent people, not bother you, not attacking you. I don't understand why someone would do that in their mind. What makes you think that's OK? If they catch somebody that has done that, what do you think should happen to that person? The full extent of whatever judicial process should happen should be done to them. You think they should go to prison for a long time? Oh, yeah. For me, if you're intentionally trying to harm an innocent person, you don't deserve to have your freedom. Now, when you went to jail, how'd you get along with the other prisoners? You know, I kind of tried to keep to myself. You'd have some guys that are like, oh, you know, we know you're innocent. Hopefully, you can beat this. And you have the other guys, oh, you did this, you're a dirt ball. And for me, jail was kind of like a, a mental torture. For some reason, they decided that I needed to live in solitary confinement almost six months. And what was their reason for that? that it was a liability for me to be around other inmates. And was this from the very beginning? Yeah, I was. I got arrested, I was alone. Was there ever a time that you weren't alone? No. So you were in solitary the entire time? Totally isolated. So for 222 days, you were in solitary confinement? Yes, I was. It was hard. Describe the room that you were in. Well, if it's totally empty, it's 8 by 12. But your bed is about 6 and a half feet by three feet wide. Then you have a two foot square table and a toilet. So you really live in about a three foot wide, six foot long square. 23 hours a day. Yeah. I was told I was looking at 100, 188 years in prison for the rest of my life. That's what I thought about every single day is, how can I beat this? Even though I know I didn't do it, I'm fighting the whole government. I've said this before. It's always been my theory. You have to have a very high standard of proof. You have to come with very strong evidence to deprive an American of their liberty and put them in a cage. And it seems to me here that they didn't have a very high standard of proof here. And it seems as though there was exculpatory evidence that put you in positions that you physically could not have done what they're saying you did. Well, as it turns out, they've had another expert looks at that proves. And he said himself, these, these four rounds do not match Mr. Merritt's gun exclusive interview. The accused freeway sniper speaks out. I understand that Arizona authorities have said, we still believe he's the guy. They know they made a mistake, so they're trying to wipe the egg off their face, if you will. They don't want to admit that they were downright wrong in the way they pursued me and, and doggedly attacked me and what they've done. We have the clip. Let's look at it. Do you believe that Les Merritt is still the freeway shooter? I believe that we have uh, enough evidence uh, to develop probable cause uh, to believe that he is the correct suspect. Uh, we, our job was to develop probable cause. The, uh, the the county's job is now to build a case beyond a reasonable doubt, and we'll allow them to do that if uh, if that is if that's where the case leads. What do you think about that? I think it's just them.
covering themselves from the mistake that they've already made. I still worry about it because if they've manufactured evidence once to arrest me, why would they not try and do this again? I guess one school of thought would be to say, you know, you're out now, it's behind you, but is it? What happened to you? What's the effect of being locked in there for 222 days? How, what impact did it have on your life first? Uh, you, you refer to this as your ex-fiance. Uh, what happened to that relationship? You know, first, you know, being away from somebody, you grow apart, but the stress of not knowing if I'm going to come home or not knowing what's going to happen, then you have all the media attention that's going on, and it's just, it was way too much, and she moved on and decided that she didn't want to pursue a relationship with me any longer. So she didn't stand by you, she left you? Yep. Your daughter was five months when you went in. Yes. She's a year old now. She's 13, going on 14 months. How did she react when she saw you? That was really tough for me, because first when I got arrested, I had my beard and everything. I came out 50 pounds lighter, clean shaven. She didn't recognize me at all. She ran away from me. I couldn't touch her for three days. My son, I did, the first day I was out, he laid down and he was taking a nap. He woke up, where's my dad? Don't leave, don't leave me. And I'm like, oh man, I'm not going nowhere, but I, you know, I'm sorry this all happened. It tore me up, it just, my kids should not have had to go through that. How do you put your life back together? I'm still trying to figure that out myself because I may have been let out of jail, but I'm still kind of confined. It, you know, anywhere I go, I get, I don't know if I'm gonna get good or negative comments from people. You know, I get harassing messages. I get, you know, people tell me that, that I'm worse than a terrorist. They believe I should rot in jail, but I also get, we're so glad you're home, be with your kids. I want your uh, your attorney, Jason Lamb, to join us, if okay. it's all right. Jason, could you step in, if you don't mind? You've been listening in as it's gone along. I, th I think he has uh, represented himself very well here today. How do you feel about it so far? You know, Leslie has always been forthright, honest, and he's been consistent from day one. He was consistent with the detectives, he was consistent with a judge who set his bail. Uh, he was consistent uh, with me, uh, my partner on the case, our private investigators. He has never wavered in his 100% innocence. The facts don't change. When people, as you know, uh, are fibbing, things change. That's never been the case with Leslie. At what point did you start representing him? My partner, Ulysses Farragut and I, we appeared with Leslie at his not guilty arraignment. That was on October 1st. And within two weeks, we filed something with a court to reduce his bail. Already, we saw the alibi evidence that proved that he was not the person responsible for the shootings. And did they reduce his bail? Initially, Leslie had, had a reduction to $150,000. And, and, and that's a big jump from a million cash to 150. Yeah. But to Leslie Merritt Jr., $150,000, even at 10%, is like a million dollars. So he sat until April 19th of 2016. What pushed this over the edge? Why is he out now? Coming up. They took 22 separate swabs from Leslie's car. And do you know how many tested positive for gunshot residue? Uh -huh. The I-10 shooter case, of course, explosive when it first broke last summer, and it seems to be getting more explosive now that it's fallen apart, with lawyers representing one-time suspect Leslie Merritt now preparing a $10 million lawsuit and today slamming DPS and the county attorney's office for this apparent debacle. This was simply a rush to judgment to pacify the community's fears, and it was a highly irresponsible and reckless investigation. What pushed this over the edge? Why is he out now? We, the defense team, we, we did a lot of work. We engaged some experts, and we did testing that the Arizona Department of Public Safety didn't do, but probably should have done. And then on top of it, prosecutors they hired an independent ballistics expert. Uh, he's the gold standard. And his opinion was that not only could Leslie's gun yeah. not be identified as the one that fired the bullets in the four shootings in which Leslie was charged, but he also went so far, Dr. Fillows, to say that he looked at the work that the state police crime lab had done and that it was insufficient to make an identification. So Leslie was released on Tuesday, April 19th, and by Friday afternoon, minutes before five o'clock, prosecutors filed a motion to dismiss his case. Yes. Why did they dismiss? 
the fact of the matter is there was no more hiding from the fact that there was no evidence to say that Leslie was responsible for these crimes. Did they ever produce freeway video? No, there was never, ever any photos or a video uh, that Leslie was involved in the shooting. Now, I know that they told him that, but it was a lie. Then what they basically got him indicted on was ballistics evidence then, right? That was the only tangible evidence, at least in their theory, that linked Leslie to the crime. There wasn't a single eyewitness. There wasn't a single piece of video. There was nothing that linked him to the crime other than the ballistic evidence that was later debunked by their own independent expert. And there was no gunshot residue in his pickup? Actually, it's interesting, Dr. Phil. Um, Leslie drove a 1998 Saturn, and, and you said pickup, and I don't mean to quibble with you, but that's really important because the vehicle that perpetrated a number of these shootings was a high vehicle. It sat high like a large SUV. Now, the police did not do that testing, but that was something that we could deduce. But they did test it for gunshot residue. They took 22 separate swabs from Leslie's car. And do you know how many tested positive for gunshot residue? Zero. And I understand that it was obvious that the car had not been cleaned. We found receipts going back, fast food receipts going back four to six months. It, it was pretty filthy. Yeah, so this was not a car that uh, had been bleached or in some way tampered with to get rid of evidence. No, Phoenix was in a state of terror, a state of panic. The director of the Department of Public Safety, he gave a radio interview and he told his own daughter not to drive the I-10 freeway. Right. So someone had to be arrested to calm the public. And, and we view this at this point as a public relations stunt. But unfortunately, this is the man that suffered. You filed a civil suit. What we have done is filed a notice of claim. And what that means under Arizona law, when you uh, intend to sue a governmental entity, you have to put them on notice. And that's what we've done. They're still saying they think he's the guy. Well, as Leslie pointed out, they have egg on their face and they're trying to save face. From day one, there hasn't been a, a snippet of evidence that says that Leslie's been responsible. Um, if they have evidence, bring it. We haven't seen any yet, but we know he didn't do it. And if they have it, bring it. We're going to fight with him the whole way. We reached out to the Arizona Department of Public Safety and they said, quote, at this time, it's still an active investigation, so we will not be commenting on this case. I think that someone in America can be taken off the street and put in solitary confinement for 222 days. Yeah. And I, that is very troubling to me. That is very troubling to me. It, it's hard to accept, but it's, there's nothing I can do but just try and move forward and, and put my life back together. My main thing is I just want everybody to see this and know, beyond a shadow of a doubt, I'm not the guy. I did not do this. Well, can I give you a piece of advice you didn't ask for? OK. Don't let anger get the better of you. I, I've walked away from a few situations already. Yeah, listen, the best revenge is living well. Mm -hmm. And you keep the nice demeanor that you have, and people will embrace that. Don't let it get the better of you, because you certainly would have a reason to. You have reason to be mad. You have reason to have a chip on your shoulder. Let people root for you, okay? Hang in there. All right, thanks a lot. Jason, thank Pleasure. you. Man. Thank you. Appreciate it. I interview a lot of people who have been accused of crimes, and Leslie Merritt Jr. was open and honest today. He answered every question I had. I want to thank both Leslie and his attorney, Jason Lamb, for being here. I hope that Leslie continues in a positive direction, continues to reconnect with his